Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Educate. Today we're going to be talking about protein synthesis. So what is protein synthesis? So protein synthesis is basically the manufacture of proteins. So when you talk about protein synthesis, we are making proteins. Anything that involves making of proteins by the cells in the body. So from grade 10, you know that proteins are organic compounds that are made within the cells of living organisms. So here in grade 12, we discuss more on how proteins are manufactured, right? So first of all, we need to know that a protein is made up of amino acids. So these smaller units or the monomers of proteins are called amino acids. It means that these things, when they are joined together, they make what we call a protein. So this whole thing is a protein, whereas these little small round blocks are called amino acids. So amino acids, as the building blocks or the monomers of proteins, they are joined by a peptide bond. So for this and this amino acid to be joined, this is what we call a peptide bond. So as I've written here, they are joined by a peptide bond so that a required protein could be formed. So we've got two organelles that are involved in the making of proteins. So those organelles are found in the cells. Remember that when you say those are organelles, those are just like organs inside the cell or organs that make up the cell of the body. So there are two organelles that are involved in the process of protein synthesis. Those are the nucleus as well as the ribosomes. So the nucleus and the ribosomes are the two organs that are involved in uh, making proteins. So the nucleus is actually this part here, which I'm marking in yellow. This is this round part, which I drew in navy blue. This is the nucleus. So the ribosomes are these red smaller blocks. So the process of protein synthesis starts at the nucleus and ends at the ribosomes. So it starts at the nucleus and ends at the ribosomes. That's where the proteins will be formed. So those amino acids, we have said that they are found inside the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is the whole space inside the cell. So amino acids are found just scattering in the cytoplasm. So how do proteins get formed? So here I've just zoomed the nucleus. You see this part? I've zoomed it in the slide. Here it is. So this is the nucleus. So as it is drawn correctly, the nucleus has got pores. These are called nuclear pores. So first of all, to be able to make proteins, we need to go through a process called transcription. When they ask you in the exam, transcription is usually five marks. So in order to make proteins, uh, we need to make first mRNA, which is messenger RNA. So messenger RNA is formed from DNA. So it is formed at the nucleus through a process called transcription. So for example, remember that DNA, it is this, um, this is DNA. Structure of DNA is just this, uh, double-stranded thing, double-stranded nucleic acid, which has got um, nitrogenous bases such as adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And we know that uh, adenine always pairs with thymine, and thymine pairs with adenine, guanine pairs with cytosine, as well as cytosine pairing with guanine. So this is what this is the structure of the DNA molecule. So the DNA molecule can be used to form mRNA inside the nucleus. So how does that happen? If I can indicate here, this is the DNA molecule. This is a DNA molecule which is found inside the, uh, the, the, the nucleus. So here it is, the DNA molecule. So this DNA molecule, let's say this is 80, this is CG, this is TA, and this is um, GC. So this is the DNA molecule that will make the mRNA. How does it do that? First process, the DNA double helix unwinds. Remember that DNA shape is called double helix. The double helix structure is something like this, something like this, like this, like this. So it has two 
unwind. So when it unwinds, this structure, when it unwinds, you can see that now we can just represent it like a stick, like A, T, G. This is T, A, C. So can you see that, remember that these nitrogenous spaces are bonded by what we call the weak hydrogen bond. So here, what actually happens is that when it unwinds the next point, the weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous spaces will break. So we are talking about these bonds that are bonding these nitrogenous spaces, they will break. So when they break, it will be something like this. This will be A alone. This will be T alone. This will be G alone. So you can see, and then this will be now T alone. This will be A alone. And then this will be C alone. Can you see that the bonds, the weak hydrogen bonds that were bonding these two nitrogenous spaces have broken down? So what is the next process? Then the two strands separate. So can you see now that these are now two separate strands of the DNA molecule? So when these two strands separate, what happens? This point is the most important to say that one DNA strand serves as a template to form mRNA. So it means that one of these DNA strand will be the one to form RNA, mRNA. So how does that happen? We can just draw this strand separately alone here and say this is A, this is T, and then this is G. So only one strand is used to form mRNA. So how does it do that? Remember in the process of DNA replication, when, Esther, when DNA is making a copy of itself, A has to pair with T, T has to pair with A, G has to pair with C, and C has to pair with G as well. So right now we are making RNA. We are making M. RNA. So this is messenger RNA. We know that the difference between DNA and RNA is that RNA has got this nucleic acid code uracil. So adenine pairs with uracil as well as um, guanine pairing with cytosine. So in this case, the next point says that to form mRNA using free DNA nucleotides. Free DNA nucleotides. So this is an important point, free, free RNA nucleotides actually. So it means that there will be a nucleotide from the nucleoplasm that will come and join here. So remember we said that A pairs with U, T pairs with A, G pairs with C. So can you see now we are creating a new strand, but then this strand is no longer called DNA, it is now called M. RNA. So this strand is now called the mRNA strand because there is what? There is uracil in it. So this explains this point that says one strand, one DNA strand serves as a template to form mRNA. So it means that when this, when these two separate, one of the strands, this strand actually, this strand here it is, it serves as a template, meaning that this is where mRNA will be formed. How does that happen? nucleotides from the nucleoplasm will come and attach to it, forming this mRNA strand. So this is now our mRNA strand. This all happens inside the nucleus, I've just illustrated. So it means that here we'll have what? We'll have mRNA that has been formed. This is mRNA that has been formed. Remember, we have got a UAC, it's written UAC. So we can just write that as well this side to say that we have formed mRNA with U, A, C. U, A, C. So U, A, C, this is the nitrogenous spaces, right? Let us just say that um, since this thing can be continuous, let us just add our nitrogenous spaces to be something like uh, this. We can say uh, C, we can say A, we can say T. When we're making an mRNA strand, this will pair with G, this will pair with U, this will pair with A. So can you see this is our mRNA strand? This is G, U, A. We can write down here and say, this is our G, 
UA. So this is an mRNA strand. Now remember that mRNA is single-stranded. It came from this DNA strand. It came from this DNA strand. Now it's mRNA. So this mRNA will leave the nucleus through the nuclear pore. This is called a nuclear pore. So remember I said in the beginning of the video that the process starts at the nucleus and goes to the ribosomes. So what actually is leaving the nucleus is this mRNA here. It is leaving the nucleus and it is going all the way to the red things which are the ribosomes. So let us reach the ribosomes. This is the mRNA. It is still moving. Let us write our nitrogenous bases again. It's um, UAC. UAC. Let's write U. A, U, A, C, this is U, A, C, as well we have got G, U, A, this is our G, U, A, G, U, A, U, A, C, so this is what, this is our mRNA, so our mRNA will come to the ribosome and attach to it in this manner, this is still the mRNA which was created in the nucleus, it attaches inside the ribosome. So we have got UAC here and GUA, which brings us to the concept of codons and anticodons. So when we have got three nitrogenous bases in mRNA that are following each other, we call that a codon. So this is called a codon. All these three, we call it a codon as one. So a codon is can be defined as three consecutive nitrogenous bases which are found in mRNA. So this is also another codon. This is also another codon. GUA is also another codon. So now how are the proteins going to be made? So when mRNA reaches here, there's a process which is called translation that's going to happen. So when the mRNA leaves the nucleus, it carries codons which are these nitrogenous bases to the ribosomes where these codons will be translated to amino acids so it means that these codons actually will result in amino acids but then how does that happen that now brings us to the concept of tyranny so this is tyranny so this is all happening in the cell remember this is the cell it's all happening around here now we're at the ribosome so this is tRNA molecules. tRNA is called transfer RNA. Its duty is to pick the amino acids from the what? From the cytoplasm. So how does that happen? So tRNA carries what we call an anticodon. Remember, tRNA is also a type of RNA. It also has nitrogenous bases. So here, let us write, for example, A, A, U, G. So this is A, U, G. And then let us say this is um, C, C, A, U. So the tRNA carries what we call an anticodon. This part is called an anticodon. Anticodon is also three nitrogenous bases which are consecutive, but then those are found in tRNA. So what will happen here? please pay careful attention. So when this anticodon matches with this codon on mRNA, then this tRNA will bring this amino acid. So this is the amino acid we're talking about. This is the amino acid. So when this tRNA anticodon matches with this mRNA codon, then it will bring this amino acid. But then how does that happen? So remember that we say that A pairs with U and then um, G pairs with C, right? So this is in case of RNA, right? Because we've got uracil involved. So you can see here we've got UAC as our codon. So UAC is our codon. It will match with an anticodon. U matches with A, remember? A matches with U and C matches with G. So this is what? This is the anticodon for this codon. So for example, I've written it out as AUG here. So it means these two actually match. So when these two actually match, it means that this tRNA will come here 
and it will bring an amino acid here on top of the ribosome. Let us try to express that. Let us try to express that. Uh, let me just group this. Okay, but then the whole point here, which I want to emphasize, is that this whole thing, um, this whole thing will move. This whole thing will move. This whole thing, this entire thing will move. This TRNA will move and come also to the ribosomes. So how does that happen? So this TRNA, when it moves, it will come here and it will deposit its amino acid at this point. It will leave its amino acid at this point. So let us just pretend that it has already moved because I'm struggling to get it here. And then for this codon, you can see we've got GUA. This is our codon on the mRNA, right? Which is the three consecutive nitrogen spaces or three nitrogen spaces that are following each other in mRNA. So this GUA anti uh, codon is actually waiting for this CAU anticodon because G matches with C, U matches with A, and A matches with U. So it means that the corresponding anticodon must be CAU. So when this part actually comes, when this part actually comes, this part, when it comes, it will come and it will come and it will come also here and just wait here. Can you see now that these have already matched? These have already matched. I wish I could move this, but then this also matches. This is AUG. So you can see that these have already matched. So as they are matching, you can see that they are bringing amino acids to the ribosomes. So these amino acids will be joined by peptide bond, will be joined by what we call peptide bonds. Let me just make a thick pen here. They will be joined by what we call peptide bond. This is a peptide bond, this is a peptide bond. So if there are more codons, there will be more anticodons to come and there will be more amino acids. So you can see that now we've got amino acids that are joined together. So this is now a protein. So this is protein synthesis, the process. So how do you explain translation? You have to first explain that each tRNA molecule or each tRNA carries a specific amino acid. You are explaining the duty of tRNA that it carries amino acids. And then when the anticodon on the tRNA, when this anticodon here, this part, when this part matches with this part, this is the next point, matches the codon on the mRNA, when these two match, for example, A matches with U, U matches with A, G matches with C. When these two match, the tRNA will come to the ribosome because of this mRNA, right? It will come with the anticodon and match here. This point says the tRNA brings the required amino acid. The tRNA will do what? Will bring the required amino acid to the ribosome. Why? It's because its anticodon matches with the codon of the mRNA. So when it brings it, these amino acids you can see now we've got our amino acids here have been brought by the tRNA molecules right so when these amino acids are brought they are now joined by this bond which we call a peptide bond so the peptide bond is the reason which will create a protein so these amino acids will become attached or become joined will become attached by peptide bonds and then after that the required protein will be formed. So this process is called protein synthesis. So you can just make sure that you know the five marks here because it's marks five marks here for describing transcription, plus minus five marks, as well as translation, it's plus minus six marks. So I recommend you to use the 2021 exam guidelines as guidelines to be able to answer these questions. If you have got any more questions, you can post in the comments in the video. And thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe or give us a super thanks. Tell your friends to stay tuned.